Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to show you guys one of the strongest builds in New World. This is going to be for 1v1 duels, and also 1v2s and 1v3s. I've tried it in all, really, areas of PvP in New World at this point. At level 55, still working insanely, insanely well in release build. So we're going to kind of show you guys the exact attributes and the exact skills that I take. But before we do so, if you have not already, jump down into the description of today's video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on, but also check out the Twitch down below. So let's get straight into it. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the attributes. So, one thing you're going to want to always try to do is take advantage of these markers. We've talked about this quite a bit, but you can see here, Constitution is going to be the only other thing you need than Dexterity. Dexterity is going to be your main focus. You're going to want to go about 50-50 from Dexterity and Constitution while you're leveling, but then you're going to want to continue a little bit farther into it with Dexterity. So here, I went to about 100 Dexterity, 50 Constitution, about 150 Dexterity, 50 Constitution, and then I finally moved this up to 100 to just get this 10% reduction, or sorry, the increased max health by 10% of your physical armor. So that's going to be a very, very strong attribute to really kind of focus on there. But I'm very, very close to this 250%, which will be very, very solid because of the critical damage that I get a lot with the bow. And then also when they're stunned with the rapier, you know, and I do that backstab damage, that 10% bonus damage could be the difference between winning a fight or losing a fight. So those are the attributes I'm currently running. Obviously, if I could take nine off of constitution, I would, and I would put it here so we could get that 250 and then keep constitution, you know, at that 102 mark. But, you know, right now I cannot do that because I have no attributes actually scaled into uh, constitution. That is all going to be from weapons and armor. So I may look at my armor and weapons and see if I can do that myself or may just wait till uh, two more levels from now. I should be able to just get that 250 dex. I do want to jump into my build right now because I have some solid, solid weapons and solid, solid gear. And I want to do that before we take a look at any of the actual uh, really abilities and by the way guys, you know in previous videos We didn't always have PvP clips at the end on this one We will make sure to have some PvP clips so you can see it in action and understand why it's so strong and how to really play it in some of these 1v1s So if we hit tab we go to our inventory We're always going to be running that medium you can try light if you want in 1v1 specifically duels uh, But it's going to be kind of tough in open world if you get in a 1v2 situation You're going to get one shot very very quickly you get caught in a grab well miss time your post miss time your evade uh, you're going to get in trouble. So I like to go straight up medium, and that's what you're seeing here, medium armor. A lot of this gear, by the way, is from the most recent Dynasty Shipyard uh, dungeon that I did. So I don't have stuff in... Not there. It's an ebb and scale reach. Let me go over here. Dynasty Shipyard is a recommended level 55, minimum players 3, and that's a very, very hard dungeon. Um, you know, a lot harder than it was, I would say. So you are going to want to make sure to be prepared if you guys are about to that level. Um, but uh, looks like we have a guy talking to me. I'm... <laughs> Okay, but we're going to go back to the build. Um, you can see that you have slots in these armor, right? So what you want to do with these specifically is make sure to get the resistance that you're dying to the most. So realistically, I'm dying. If I die, I pretty much die to a great axe, it seems. It's me misplaying and getting killed by a great axe. So what I would want is slash resistance on my armor. So that's one thing you'll do there. Uh, if you are looking to do um, the bow or, you know, the bow rapier build like we are, you are going to want to focus on getting a gem that's called the opal. The opal gem is going to be giving you bonus damage when you have uh, a decent amount, or sorry, when you're under 100 stamina, you're actually going to get bonus damage. So that's what you're going to want in your rapier and your bow if they have sockets. You can see, guys, that this is a fairly solid bow. It's kind of weird that we have focus on it. Um, it's not too, too strong, but the big thing to worry about here is gear score and damage, and it's got exactly that. 491 gear score is absolutely huge. We also have the rapier. Hey, literally just watched one of your videos, LMA. What a small world. I got to reply to this, guys, in the video. Sorry about that. Thanks and appreciate it, guys. If you guys are in my world, I always appreciate these kind of messages. Um, I'm in Cressilia on US East, if you guys didn't know. Um, and okay, let's get back to it, guys. Sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked by him, but 490 on the gear score on the rapier, 491 on the gear score on the bow. So the rapier is really, really, really cool. Um, this rapier is one that dropped when I was like level 43, and I had to wait to actually wield it or equip it until 53. So that's... Very, very exciting that finally I was able to equip it. I'm going to show you guys where this rapier dropped in case you guys, maybe about level 45, start running this. Um, so let me go over there, and before we talk about the specific abilities, I kind of want to, like I said, show you where you can actually farm that rapier. It dropped from this right here, Fang Snaps Den in Restless Shore. It's only 41 area. All it is is a boss wolf that you can probably solo, like I said, at level 40 to... You know, honestly, 40 to 45, you should be able to easily slow, solo this. And it, it dropped that rapier for me a 
pretty insane, insane rapier that I was able to use it for 53 and continuing to probably use it until I find a better one or get the faction rep at 60. But I do want to go into now the abilities. So the abilities is a big thing. Obviously, you can see I'm not maxed out on bow because I st did start leveling fire staff a little bit. I leveled ice gauntlet just a tad as well. But, you know, I'm about level 19 mastery on the bow, obviously 20 on rapier. Uh, but I do want to jump into the rapier or the rapier because we are going to see that uh, I am going to go the two passives on blood. So refreshing strikes and the in guard or so on guard. You guys came after me on the last video. I said in guard instead of on guard. Terrible, terrible mistake. So here you can see that these are both great, great options. You're going to reduce cooldowns by 1% or sorry, 1% on hit. And you're also going to have to deal 10% more damage when your target has greater than 50% health. So if you are in a situation where they come at you and you aren't really, you're kind of off guard, you're going to be able to actually repose, do a lot of damage while they're above 50% health. And you don't actually have to, you know, have them such low health to try to execute with your melee weapon. If we go over to the gray side, pretty much taking everything over here. Uh, the repost is such a strong, 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 really counter to, you know, so much. Uh, it's easily outplayed, but at the same time, a lot of people don't know how to outplay repost, and it's just so strong because you're able to really avoid damage from about any ability. If we go over to evade, you're going to have the same situation. You can actually sidestep. It's not much mo movement or mobility, but you're able to sidestep almost any attack. It's going to be so, so strong in so many different situations. If we go over to the flesh... This is going to be absolutely insane for movement and mobility. Also very, very helpful when you're in PvE doing leveling, by the way, because you get this right here. Killing with this ability reduces its cooldown by 80%, so you can just keep dashing back and forth, dashing back and forth, dashing back and forth between enemies and mobs if you are one-shotting them, or even if you're not one-shotting them. You know, using turkeys, rabbits, and stuff, by the way, when you are chasing... Uh, and I'll show that actually in a clip here in just a second, in a, in a Twitch clip when we killed somebody. I dashed through, I think, a bunny or a turkey on the way to get that kill, and it gave me the reset, obviously, so giving me twice the distance. Very, very strong to use it the correct way. Also, Red Curtain is going to be strong. Critical Strikes reduce all cooldowns by 5%. If you can land enough autos with the Rapier, you're going to be dashing nonstop with your Evade. It's going to be crazy because the Evade also has individual successful line attacks reduce the cooldown of this ability by 30% each. Insane how much cooldown you have. Desperation, by the way, another one that's so great. Deal 10% more damage when your stamina is below 40%. You're below 40% stamina quite a bit if you are trying to, you know, escape, an, escape a situation. So I like this one as well. We also have the controlled breathing plus three stamina on any hit. We go over to uh, a couple more on this right side. You know, right now we are maxed out. I don't like these, you know, swiftness doesn't do much for me. 3% haste just isn't enough. Obviously stacks, but you know, I don't like perfectionist. You don't really ever have full health with a rape here if you're in a duel or a fight. So I don't like those. I like this specific build right here. This is exactly what I like to go. Very, very fun build. A very, very skillful build as well. We're going to go into the bow now because the bow is a little bit different. You could choose different things. I like this specifically, though. Uh, we're going to stay away from the haste. I know a lot of people love the haste, so gain 10% haste for two seconds when you dodge. Well, that two seconds is so, so short. Um, you could definitely go this, and we have two more points, so we'll have to decide exactly where we put those two points in just a second. But you can see that evade shot is definitely one to take. Evade shot actually leaps you backwards, and you, by the way, knock them backwards when you do so. So it causes a two-meter knockback which is so so good for kiting it works well 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 against you know charges on the uh on the great axe it works so well on pretty much everything so definitely use that we're going to want evasive tactics obviously dealing 20 percent more damage for five seconds we're going to want catch me if you can if surrounded by three or more foes within three meters of you gain 20 percent haste this is strong because it's constantly on right so it's constantly on if there's that many people around you so you're going to be very very fast in those situations we also have the mark and by the way that makes this you know a 1v2 possible or a 1v3 possible build uh if we go over here to the side we have mark so deal 10 percent more damage to foes from a debuff this thing lasts for 20 seconds poison shot that's going to be a debuff so you're going to want to add mark do more damage basically uh we go over to the other side penetrating shot shoot an arrow dealing 150 percent weapon damage that passes through targets and continues for 100 meters we also see that the, you know, blood-soaked arrow increases damage uh, by 10% after each hit, maximum 50%. And, you know, penetrating shot, like I said, is so, so strong, deals more damage the farther away the enemy. And it can actually, like I said, go penetrating through multiple targets, so it's good for that really AoE damage as well. If your target is below 50% health, deal 20% more damage, an obvious choice in my opinion. We also have the long range, so deal 20% more damage to foes at 10 meters away surprise attack also a very good one so if you haven't damaged a foe in the last 10 seconds your first shot's going to do 20 percent extra damage that's quite a bit and uh you know if we continue on we have arrow range increased arrow distance before start of gravity by 100 percent and bullseye so bow shots critical strike or critical chance i guess increased by 10 percent so that's what i have at level 18 right so we have two more points to put in and what are we seeing 
uh, that really makes sense. So there's a lot of great options out there. And if you're struggling with the arrow, uh, or not struggling with the arrow, you definitely don't have to take arrow range, by the way, if you don't really need it. Uh, I just love to have it, and it's some kind of preference. I just think I hit more shots with it. But it's like I said, up to you. Hitting a foe with the debuff grants five stamina. This is a decent uh, ability to take as well, just or passive, because if you have put the pass or sorry, the poison on top of the target, I'm gonna have to decline this just because I don't want that to stick on the video the whole time. But you can see Hunter's insight hitting a foe with a debuff grants five stamina. Um, that's really really solid because you're gonna continue to give yourself stamina just by hitting shots in a fight. Definitely in war, you're gonna continue to have so much stamina. Uh, but you know, if we continue on, there's so many great options. You can also go the knee shot if you want. So leg shots cause 10% slow for two seconds. It's not enough of a slow to make it too, too big of a deal. But that's why you could also take concussion. You could go to the other side, throw a passive on that side, and uh, you take, take concussion. Um, and when you land a headshot, you deal 20% more damage and 50% chance to get your arrow back. So that's going to do a little bit more damage if you are hitting headshots. Not a bad choice. You could go either one with these. Um, obviously, you would have to you know move abilities around to make that happen. But... You know, that's going to be the really rapier and bow build. Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry that I'm not 20 on both, so I could show you. I was going to continue with the, you know, the rapier bow, but a lot of the viewers on Twitch wanted me to, you know, kind of test out the fire staff. So I did that until 53 when I could change back to that rapier. I do want to talk a little bit more about this build when it comes to the gameplay. So first off, let's use all the abilities just so you guys can see what we're looking like. This is the evade shot I'm talking about. This is the penetrating shot. And by the way, if you didn't know, Penetrating shot into a poison shot is going to be such a strong combo because of how fast you can do it. I'm not going to use my poison shot quite yet because I want to show you that. But here is the flesh, and you can actually do a backstab. So at the end, that backstab, or backstab damage does a lot of damage. And if you actually end or kill a target with that backstab, you're going to get a reset or 80% cooldown reduction basically on that backstab uh, if you kill the target with the, even the backstab, not just the flesh action. We also have the repost, obviously. You've seen this. If they attack during that, we do a counter. And then we would typically want to dodge behind them and do a heavy attack in the back. We also have evade. So evades where, you know, if you're in a grab wall just stuck, um, you know, evading really to dodge any kind of big abilities or if you see them, you know, using, let's say, Path of Destiny on the hammer, you're going to want to evade that perfectly. If you evade it perfectly, obviously, you are going to avoid the entirety of that damage in CC. So it's very, very strong. But I want to show you, like I said, that kind of penetrating and poison shot in a combo. And this PvP clip that you guys are going to be seeing here in just a second was on Twitch uh, when I was streaming and somebody did clip it for me. So thank you for that. But like I said... You can see kind of the penetrating and poison shot kind of working together. Um, I was going to see if I could find a mob. Doesn't look like I'm going to find a mob here. I could have prepared for that a little better. Watch this guy be PvP'd. Nope, not quite. But let's just test it on him acting like he's PvP'd. So we would hit the point or penetrating. We'd hit the poison right afterwards. So basically the penetrating is going to keep him still. And then we're going to throw, like I said, that poison right on top of that exact same spot location. And he's going to get double hit. Pretty, pretty quick damage. A lot of damage, obviously. Poison does so much damage as well, so over time he's going to take a lot of damage. And then you have your evade for really just a more of an escape, or if you need to CC to catch up to him, it's dangerous to use it that way because if you miss that shot, you're not going to catch him. So that's just my, like I said, rapier, bow build. Definitely the strongest, like I said, in 1v1s, 1v2s right now. I think we could see the fire staff come out for 1v3s, 1v4s, or even 2v3s or 2v4s. It's going to be better for you know large-scale PvP most likely. But when it comes down to this small-scale PvP, guys, this is the build to go. This is the strongest, in my opinion, build. I've tested it quite a bit in past iterations, and now testing it in release. It's still up there with the strongest 1v1 and really, you know, doling build. So thank you guys again for tuning in. I'm going to switch you guys over to a couple of the clips and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys all in the next one.